Just Ukrainian officials say Moscow is bringing new military units into the Russian-occupied city of Kherson. However, the officials installed by Russia to run the city are abandoning it as a Ukrainian offensive presses into the region. Meanwhile, Russia continues to target civilians. Forces bombarded a residential area in the southern city of Mykolaiv. Over the weekend, missiles hit a playground and blew out windows and doors in a five-story apartment building. And Russia is floating the idea that Ukraine is planning to use a so-called dirty bomb on its own people. Holly Williams has more from Ukraine. Well, Russia's general in charge of nuclear defense claims that Ukraine's in the final stages of building a so-called dirty bomb and could use it against its own people. A dirty bomb has never been used before, is not a nuclear bomb and would be far less harmful. But by using conventional explosives to spread radioactive material, it's an effective weapon of terror and would contaminate the area. The US, along with the UK and France, has dismissed Russia's allegation as transparently false, saying the world will see through any attempt by Russia to use it as a pretext for escalation. Ukraine's president, Vladimir Zelensky, said, quote, if Russia claims Ukraine's preparing something, it means one thing, suggesting it's actually Russia that plans to use a dirty bomb. The U.S. has repeatedly accused Russia of so-called false flag operations, staging violent incidents and blaming them on Ukraine as a justification for its brutal invasion. In reality, it's President Vladimir Putin who's threatened to use nuclear weapons here in Ukraine. The U.S. says it hasn't seen any indications the Russians plan to deploy a nuclear weapon, but says there would be consequences for Russia, whether it used a nuclear bomb or a dirty bomb. John. Holly Williams, thank you. For more on this, I want to bring in Mason Clark. He is a senior analyst and Russia team lead at the Institute for the Study of War. Mason, what's behind what Russia is up to with this dirty bomb theory? So this unfortunately tracks with a lot of claims the Russians have made, and not just in the war in Ukraine, but in the past. The Russian defense minister Shoigu, who called a number of his Western counterparts on Sunday to deliver this false claim, has actually made similar allegations throughout the war, even as far back as last December, making claims that Ukraine was preparing some sort of dirty bomb. Throughout the course of the conflict, the Russian invasion, various Russian officials have claimed that Western states are assisting Ukraine with developing either a nuclear weapon or a dirty bomb, which, as the previous report noted, is not a full-scale nuclear weapon, as well as other forms of chemical and radiological weapons, and claim that they're going to be used against Russia. Now, all of these have not, of course, have not been borne out, but the Russians continue to claim this in order to, in some ways, rally their own base, as well as rattle the saber of a possible threat in retaliation. But this is likely much more meant to intimidate Ukraine as well as its Western supporters, rather than being an early indicator of the Russians actually using a dirty bomb of their own. So should we think of it, Mason, as a kind of a psychological weapon? And if so, does that lead you to draw any conclusions about how desperate the Russians are if they're engaging in this uh, kind of psychological effort? Certainly. I do think that it's very unlikely that the Russians use such a weapon or nuclear weapons, though we unfortunately can't fully rule it out, but I doubt it's imminent uh, by any stretch of the imagination. Yes, I do think this shows how on the back foot the Russians are, and they're likely trying new methods to intimidate and divide the Western alliance that is supporting Ukraine as they suffer further battlefield setbacks. They're likely going to lose that crucial city of Kherson by the end of the year, though it still may be a couple of weeks or months, and are facing further setbacks in northeastern Ukraine as well. They're certainly not throwing in the towel and looking for an actual ceasefire or an end to the war, but likely trying to manipulate diplomatic processes to pause the fighting and give Russian reinforcements time to actually enter the battlefield. So even accepting for a moment that this is really a psychological tactic, isn't one of the reasons that most analysts, and what's your view on this, think that it's unrealistic that Russia will either use a dirty bomb in this false flag operation or use a tactical nuclear weapon, is that you don't want a lot of radioactive material blowing around on the Russian border or making the areas you've just been trying to grab uninhabitable. Is that a reasonable uh, understanding of why they wouldn't do this kind of thing? 
In part, certainly, especially since the Kremlin falsely claims that it has just annexed uh, parts of Ukraine, it would be quite the feat to have to explain why they've just detonated a dirty bomb on what is what they're claiming to be Russian territory. Um, it certainly would be difficult to clean up and have uh, possible bad effects on the Russian forces themselves, or as you noted, this territory they're trying to occupy. But in addition to that, it's very unlikely that it would have decisive effects for the Russians. It's not going to force the Ukrainians to surrender. It's not going to destroy the Ukrainian military. And it would likely lead to even more isolation of Russia, if not some sort of direct NATO conventional response. So if Putin was to go ahead with this, he would be taking a massive risk for something that probably wasn't actually going to win the war for him. Ergo, at this point, still fairly unlikely, we believe. And and finally, Mason, give me your understanding of, or what, what? Why is Kherson so strategically important? As I understand it, it's the biggest city that Russia has actually been able to take and hold for a moment or two. So if they're getting routed in Kherson, that would seem to be uh, both embarrassing, but also is there some special strategic benefit to this area? Right. It's the only major Ukrainian city Russian forces have seized, uh, and they did so in the earliest days of the war. Kherson is a very crucial uh, port, or pardon me, city on the southern coast of Ukraine and is in many ways a springboard to further cities such as Mykolaiv, which the Russians shelled, and onward to Odessa. If they lose that, they will very much lose the opportunity to continue their offensive operations further into western Ukraine, which, of course, at this point are already off the table, but the Kremlin is thinking in a longer-term picture of how it can likely renew its aggression against Ukraine. Furthermore, if they have to pull back from the city of Kherson itself across the Dnipro River, that will put them into a much more limited position and possibly allow the Ukrainians to further threaten Russian rear areas heading into the Crimean Peninsula. So definitely a key location, though we are seeing indications that they'll be forced to give it up due to very effective Ukrainian attacks. All right, Mason Clark, thanks so much for being with us tonight.